This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, is brought to you by the Roland Corporation. Okay. You know what I'd like to work through in this segment is a famous Elton John tune called Your Song. Now when I say, you know, work through it, what I mean in what we're going to do here is really not focus on his actual arrangement or his actual stylistic things to make it sound like it, like it, you know, you're used to hearing it on the record. Instead, I want to take three or four steps backward and really focus on learning what the chord changes are of this tune and, you know, with the melody line, where they change and where they interact so that once you get that basic stuff down, you'll really have the, the you know, the foundation that you need to move forward and then take advantage of some of these other tips and tricks we can teach you that really bring it up to, to sounding polished and like something you'd be, you know, ready to go out and play in front of people. So again, we're going to go backward a few steps and focus just on kind of the structure of the tune. And to do that, as always, we're going to use a lead sheet because by its very nature, a lead sheet is only going to show you kind of the DNA of the song, if you will. It's just the melody line and the chord changes, not any of the arrangement that someone may have used in the past. It's just the bare bones essence of what the song is, which is really what you want to learn at the beginning so you can get comfortable with that. Now, this uh, melody line is really, uh, because assuming you know the tune well and it's a tune you're used to hearing, it's a melody line that I think is pretty darn easy to play if you try to play along with your singing. All right, And we've talked about that in the past in times, but this one in particular, if you literally play everything you sing, you know, it's a little bit funny this feeling inside. Now you're probably not going to see that, you know, written that way, but if you can, if you can just sing out loud and you know, I'm a terrible singer and I'm doing it here on TV. So if I can do it, you can certainly do it by yourself at home. Right? Um, it, it, that point of trying to imitate yourself singing. Whatever you're doing, that's a really healthy exercise to go through that's going to end up making your melodic lines sound a lot more interesting than sitting and reading verbatim from a lead sheet and going. You know, and that was exactly the way it's written in the lead sheet. Well, you know, that's not how you'd ever really play the tune in the real world. So, you know, practice what you're going to do in the real world and just play the way you would sing the tune. So you can work on, you know, you can work your way through the tune. The and you can ignore my left hand. You know, the uh, what a And on, on through the tune. So, you know, you've got to work your way through the tune doing that. So that will get your right hand comfortable, you know, with what the melody line's doing. But now to really kind of lock that melody line into some context, you need to do it with the chords. And so we need to learn what the chord changes are in this tune. And this follows, uh, it's, 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 they're really very nice chord changes. It starts on, it's, it's in the key of E flat, so the first, the first chord is an E flat chord. And it's a little bit funny, and it goes to an A flat major seven chord. And where I'm coming up with the notes from this chord is just, you know, I've, I've memorized all these from chord diagrams at some point in my life. And if you don't have any chord diagrams available, I would strongly encourage you thinking about getting a resource that has some in it, whether it's a, a little, you know, keyboard chord finder, a little electronic battery operated thing, which is what I really like to use. Or you can get these big fat books that have all these chords in them. But you want to find one, you make sure that has the little keyboard diagrams, which have the uh, pictures with little notes and the dots where you put your fingers. Fingers. That's the best way to learn chords in this style, rather than trying to see what they look like notated. Um, so doing it that way, you just need to get these chords under hand and learn it. Now a couple things I want to mention in these chord changes coming up here. There's a lot of something called a slash chord in this tune. And probably the simplest way I know to describe slash chords is it's the way in lead sheet notation they tell you to play something in the bass that is not the root. Okay? It's basically saying I want you to play a chord, but instead of what you would normally play as the root note of that chord on the bottom, I want you to play some other note. I want you to play some note that might be in the chord, may not be, it's just not the root. So the simpler way to I think think of it, when you see for example this third chord over after the tune starts, we've got B flat slash D. All right? So what's that telling us? If you can take that slash and kind of tip it to the right so it looks like a like a uh, fraction, I think it's a simpler way to think about it. And it's how musicians describe this. Instead of saying B, B flat slash D, a musician would call that B flat over D. 
So tip it to the right and think of it B flat over D, and that makes it pretty straightforward. You've got a B flat chord over a D note. So the B flat on top, or in some way play that B flat, but make sure the D is the bottom note. And so in essence, that's all you're doing there. You, instead of playing the B flat like this, this is a normal B flat major chord with B flat, D, and F, you just tip it so it's like that. Now the D's on the bottom. So there you've accomplished it, a B flat slash D. All right, so moving on through the things we have. Uh, it's a little bit funny. There's that. This feeling inside. There's a G minor. Ba -da -da. Now here's another slash. This is a C minor slash B flat. That's saying play the C minor chord, but you got to play B flat on the bottom. And that's kind of telling you to move this bass line to go. Here's a C slash A, or C slash minor A, then an A flat, then E flat slash B flat again. I'm just following my way through here, working my way through the chords. But there are a lot of slash chords in this tune, so it behooves you to kind of spend some time thinking that through. And in most cases, it's because he's got, Elton John really wrote a nice bass line that, that moves very stepwise, so to, to kind of force you to play that bass line, he gives you all these slash chords, and that's why it's like that. We both could live. Um, let me move to the bridge section that says, uh, and you can tell everybody. There's a C minor chord. F minor 7, A flat, nothing hard there, working our way on through. Yeah, even in the, the code at the end, let's go to B. I hope you don't mind that I put down in words. Again, just more slash chords. There's a C minor, C minor slash B flat, C slash minor A, A flat. So you just, you know, it's wanting to hear. That's how that is, and so they're going to tell you that with slash chords. So, having said that, let's stick it together and uh, kind of give you a sense of how that would work, and then you can spend time on your own really getting this thing underhand. A good way to start, if you're struggling getting all the chords played, is to just play the root of a chord. So, if you know if that's a step one you need to take before you play all the notes in your left hand, feel free to do that, and it would sound something like this. You go. And again, at this point, we're not focusing on you know, playing it up-tempo or playing it perfectly in-tempo, we're focused on what does this sound like together? What's the chord change along with the melody line, okay? Um, just playing roots or whatever's to the right of the slash. full chords, right? Now I'll move the melody line up an octave so I can get myself out of the way. moving that way. So, you know, that's a way to get through a tune. I really think it, it behooves you to spend a little time doing just what we're doing, thinking, okay, what's the chord and where's the melody line, and intentionally not worrying about, you know, how fast you're playing it or whether you're playing it in tempo. Forget that for right now. That's kind of the, that's, that's the next step up the ladder. Right now, you just need to think about really learning the tune so that you won't be fumbling over what the next chord change is as you then focus on adding some more tips and tricks and kind of putting some more layers on the cake. So I hope you have fun playing your song by Elton John. It's really a beautiful tune. It's piano based. And boy, to get some of these things underhand will really, really be fun to play for your family and friends. So as always, have fun. This excerpt from the public television program, The Piano Guy, has been brought to you by the Roland Corporation, international manufacturer of the finest keyboards, organs, and digital pianos. To find out more, log on to RolandUS.com.